We do have some bones, everybody. We have a buffalo that uh, Herbert was trying desperately to try and find, and he did find it. And he says it was killed by lions down across the other side. And it was killed sometime during the drought when the lions were killing buffalo all over the place and not completing the carcasses. And I think what's really interesting here, look at the front of the nose. It hasn't been chewed off, and it's extremely unusual to find a buffalo carcass in this state. Normally what you'll find is that the front of the nose has been bitten off, and actually, I don't know if you can see from here, but there's a join in the skull there. I've f obviously forgotten what bone that is. I think it's probably the nasal bone, actually, that joins to the palate. And that is normally bitten off at some stage, either during the killing or during the eating. So that's quite interesting. Then we've got pretty much the entire spine here intact. And I just want to show you one piece of it here. And that's this. This is the axis axle joint. And it fits on here. Now this is, as far as I remember, this piece here is called the occipital condyle. A condyle is a joint that allows movement. An occipital, uh, well, it's just got to do with the head, basically. And look how it fits in there. But what's interesting, I mean, your occipital condyle and the joint with the axis or the first um, cervical vertebra looks nothing like this. And that's because you don't have anything like the amount of mass that this buffalo has to carry on his head. And so he's got this huge bone that must support the mass of his vast head and vast horns over there. And then obviously through the middle of that goes the spinal column in which travel, of course, the cerebrospinal fluid and all of the nerves that will eventually allow him to walk and function and eat and fight and, well, eventually those nerves let him down slightly in his inability to fight off the lions that killed him. So that's quite interesting there. Then maybe we can join the next vertebra. So the axis is the first one, the axle the second one if I'm not mistaken. So this is the axis C1, cervical vertebra number one. And as you all know I struggle desperately with my anatomy to remember what's what and where. And this would be the ax axis axle. This would be the axle and it fits on there like that. And it too is very massive. And I've forgotten what all of these processes are called. I think these are called processes, transverse process and uh, various other kind of processes. I'm not sure why they're called processes but they're the sticky arty bits of the vertebra. And you can see their heart fits together. We'll try one more. And just remember if you are perhaps a young viewer don't do this and then go and lick your hands. Okay, this is a very old buffalo. We know it didn't die of anthrax, so there's no chance of me getting anthrax. But these bones will carry various diseases on them if you're not careful. And so you do need to be careful about washing your hands after you've touched them. There. And this should maybe be a new toy for the tent. If the tent was big enough, I would absolutely say this should be a new toy. There are the three bones together. I think that's quite impressive. Don't you? Marvellous. C1, C2, C3. Uh, in fact, let's, why don't we just quickly construct the whole of the neck. So the neck is seven vertebra. We know that. And so they would fit in there like that. Right. Here is four cervical vertebra number four. I'm sure I've put it in the wrong way, have I? <laughs> there we are. See how they rest on top of each other there? That little sort of transverse piece there, that flattened bit, sits in top in there like that. And you can also see how they've been worn away. Now I assume that there should have been some cartilage in between there that would have allowed for this buffalo to sort of move his head without grinding bone against bone. And I also suspect that he was quite old and that's why these pieces have been worn away completely flat on top of each other. So that's C4. C5 coming up. This is wonderful fun, I must say. Connor would love this. Connor, of course, in the final control, loves puzzles. There we go, C5. And it really does fit beautifully like a puzzle. Here's C6. There we are. 
and C7 should be the last one without a rib, and it is. Then we move on to the thoracic vertebra, which I'm not going to try and pick out here because they have all the ribs on them. So there is the full neck of this buffalo. C1, which is completely different, that's the axis bone. C2, the axle, which looks not dissimilar from the others, but it doesn't have quite the same design. Uh, all of these pieces have got real names, which I don't know. And then C3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 down here. And after this, we would move on to the thoracic vertebra, which are behind me, and they are attached, of course, to all the ribs. Marvellous. I think that's quite interesting. Good. We'll put that back there like that. And if the tent had space, then I would say definitely we should try and put this in here. Now, toxigenet, of course, this is a very good question, perhaps something I should have addressed immediately. You say, how many vertebrae do giraffe have? The same number as you have, the same number as buffalo has, the same number as a blue whale has. Every single mammal, as far as I'm aware, has got seven cervical vertebrae. I think it varies in the thoracic region and into the lumbar region, but the th as far as thoracic vertebrae goes, every single mammal has got, at least cervical vertebrae goes, every single mammal has got seven. And you can see that this one has got seven, very conveniently arranged so that we can show how they are. On a giraffe, of course, they're just much longer. So they're probably about that long each. So where this has the space for three, uh, giraffes would probably be one. And so they're very, very much longer than this. And of course, the axis axle joint on a giraffe is actually really interesting. Let me just move this across like that. It's very interesting because it allows not the axis axial joint, I think the, 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 it might actually be the condyle joint, it's one of the two. But what it allows is the giraffe's head to move almost 180 degrees. So a buffalo's head, probably a bit like ours, can move through about 100 degrees or so. If I do that, I can go from there all the way to about there, which is maybe 100 degrees or so, maybe a little bit more, 120. And giraffe can move his head at 180 degrees, so they can turn their heads completely the other way, so that they can reach up high into the branches. Um, so let me just quickly put this back in, like that. And, yeah, I mean, the flexibility in this is very limited. And that, of course, is imp extremely important if you are going to bash your head against a, comp a competitor for mating rights and that sort of thing. You don't want a huge amount of flexibility here. You need a very solid place to take the impact. So that is the story of the buffalo and his seven cervical vertebra. Thank you so much.